what we're going to be doing is dosing off flavors into Olympia. So uh, what we're going to be focusing on is the differences between your control cup and the spikes that are going to be coming around. As a Cicerone, you need to be able to detect these off flavors, know what they smell like and taste like, know when in the process they developed in the beer, and know how to avoid uh, the, the flavor from occurring, um, you know, know what went wrong and know how to troubleshoot it, and uh, be able to talk about that to brewers or to bartenders or to the public, you know, if you were teaching a class or something like that. So that's your role as a, as a Cicerone with off flavors. Uh, the idea of an off flavor is that it is something that is occurring in a beer that is a that has some sort of aromatic effect or perhaps a taste effect or perhaps a mouthfeel, but usually it's an aroma uh, that is not intended by the brewer and it's not really something the brewer wants. There are lots of lucky things that can occur in a beer that a brewer is like, ooh, I got lucky on that one. That's a fun extra flavor that's in there that I wasn't necessarily anticipating getting from my malt or from my hops or from my yeast or whatever. But then there are a lot of other flavors that can develop that are not really that enjoyable. Um, those flavors are also sometimes part of other beer styles when they are enjoyable. So an off flavor doesn't mean that it's gross and it tastes bad. Frankly, a lot of these are flavors that we enjoy in other foods, but they're just not flavors that are always appropriate in every style of beer. Great, we're gonna move on to diacetyl. This is one that I'm not super sensitive to. A lot of people are very, very sensitive to diacetyl. They can smell it walking in the room. They don't even wanna to touch this beer. However, I'll drink it. <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with it for the most part. Uh, yeah, thank you. Cheers. Um, so I find a lot of people are, if you're sensitive to diacetyl, this is just anecdotal. I can't promise this. But if you're sensitive to diacetyl, you tend not to be sensitive to DMS. If you're sensitive to DMS, you tend not to be sensitive to diacetyl. That's just something I've noticed. Um, so if you are smelling butter and butterscotch and the fake buttered popcorn you get at a movie theater, that's, what, that's diacetyl. How, wh why do we describe it as buttery? What does it have to do with butter? It's created by bacteria, and those bacteria are not only in beer, they're are not only happy to contaminate beer, they're also happy to contaminate or culture cream. Cream doesn't smell like butter, but when bacteria gets in there and starts to culture it, it can turn it a little bit sour, so you get sour cream, you get creme fraiche, yogurt, things like that, but also you can get a buttery aroma. And so that's why, that's the main difference between butter and cream. The fact that there's diacetyl in butter. We like it in butter, right? We, well, most of us don't like it in beer. So um, keep that in mind. This is produced by every brewer's yeast ever, okay? This is just a natural part of the production. Uh, so like acetaldehyde, this is something that should be cleaned up by a good healthy yeast given enough time after the primary fermentation. So that is another essential part of the aging process of beer after fermentation is over. So fermentation for an ale might take three or four days. For a lager, it might take five, six, seven days. After that, let it sit for two, three weeks, and then your yeast is going to say, hey, acetaldehyde, get out of here, and hey, diacetyl, get out of here. And so it's going to make the beer taste a lot better. So if you drink young beer or green beer, it's called, some of the rough stuff around that, you know, the ways it's rough around the edges are things like acetaldehyde, so green apple and diacetyl, butter. There are two main styles of beer in which diacetyl is sort of allowed in small amounts. One of those styles is called Czech Premium Pale Lager. It's a mouthful, I didn't come up with the name, CPPL, uh, otherwise known as Pilsner, Pilsner, all right? So real deal Czech Pilsner, Pilsner or Quell, has a little bit of diacetyl in it. Not enough to offend a lot of people, however there is a little bit, and that comes from the yeast. That's something that the yeast produces and it doesn't clean all, uh, all of it up. Another uh, much broader style, much broader uh, tradition for having a little bit of diacetyl is the English ales. Uh, English or British ales, I should say. Um, they traditionally have had a decent amount of diacetyl in them. Uh, it's kind of falling out of favor, falling out of fashion. So they're starting to, um, I don't know what they're doing exactly, if they're fermenting their beers a little bit colder or leaving the yeast on for a little bit longer or what they're doing, but they're doing something so that the diacetyl amounts are starting to tail off a little bit. But it's not uncommon if you're super sensitive to diacetyl. I talk to people all the time, like, I hate walking in an English pub because it just smells like diacetyl. I can totally, I can totally like, taste it when I do, what do you call it, uh, when you breathe afterwards? Retronasal? It's all, yeah. It's all buttery. Big time. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, so two other things on that. Uh, when a lot of people say, oh, this smells like buttered popcorn. Yes, but it's really the 
butter that's being added to the popcorn. It's not a corny aroma. DMS is a corny aroma. So when you say diacetyl is butter popcorn, that can be misleading. Really, you're focusing on the butter part, not the popcorn part. Uh, the other thing about diacetyl is it's the only off flavor that we taste today that really has a mouthfeel component. It should add a slight slickness to the mouthfeel. It's an easy mnemonic to remember. The idea that butter is slick and slippery and all that, diacetyl is the same way. The others don't really have a, a mouthfeel dimension. Uh, they're really mostly aromatic. Uh, okay, so we're going to move on to our next one. Yeast is very happy to clean up after itself. It looks around, it's like, all right, well, I'm still awake. I might as well clean up after the party.